If you're nerds like Dave and I are, self-admitted no less, you've probably been introduced to a lot of different firearms through video games. Now, of course, video games don't necessarily replicate what reality actually is as far as firearms, but there have been a lot of very interesting video game guns that Dave and I want to share with you right now. Hello, friends and lovers. This is the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. But Chris, today we're not going to compare cartridges to each other. We're going to talk about mostly impossible and ridiculous guns featured in our favorite time-wasting pastime video games. No, Dave, you're absolutely right. And I think it's really interesting because, you know, as a kid, lots of us don't have access to firearms for probably good reasons. But uh, one of our most early introductions into that 2A community or, you know, uh, shooting guns in general is through video games because, well, you, you can't hurt anybody when you're slamming your controller into the ground as opposed to having an accidental discharge. And I think that it's interesting how, you know, video games really, uh, you know, meld or mold people's opinions to what farms really are. And so today we have our top 14 video game guns that we want to share with you. Yeah. Chris, start off with the gun that you says causes the most salt in the Halo community. Oh gosh, yes. Now uh, let's get our uh, get into the uh, the UNSC, which is the United Nations Space Command. We'll get Master Chief in here, ready to go, and I'm sure Cortana has a thing or two to say about the Needler. Now this is one of the Covenant's nastiest weapons out there. It basically shoots like little crystalline shards that will home to a target and then when you get enough of them there i did some research on this apparently they have like some type of magnetic resonance that basically makes them shatter into a bunch of shrapnel but as far as you know pvp people absolutely hate the needler just because of how devastating and op it is it's just so cool because it's like you're not shooting bullets, you're shooting little crystals out and they actually home to the target, which kind of feels like cheating almost. And now you've got one uh, that uh, maybe doesn't shoot uh, crystals, but shoots something a little bit different. What's your next favorite video game gun? Chris, like everyone else who has a pulse and an IQ, I love the zero point energy field manipulator or gravity gun from Half-Life 2. Now the beauty of this device is that it can pick up virtually anything and launch it at your enemy and do horrible things to them on impact. I don't know how it works. I don't know if anyone has tried to explain how it works. I don't care how it works. I just like picking up truck tires and launching them at cyborgs and listening them to go when they die. When you first get the gravity gun and you go into that room full of saw blades and then zombies come in, uh, it took me a few hours to figure out what they were going for there, but I eventually got it. It definitely adds another aspect of fun and creativity uh, to video games. And we talked about salt inducing before. And if there's another gun on our list that is definitely salt inducing, it is from the classic first person shooter. And that is GoldenEye 007 on the N64. And of course, we're talking about none other than the golden gun. In the game, Goldeneye, the golden gun was basically a one-shot kill. Now, you only had one bullet, and you had to load them individually, but there was a tiny little character. His name was Knickknack. I had to look this up. And, uh, you know, about half the height of everybody else. And if this, you know, character got the golden gun, nigh unkillable, because you basically could barely hit them at all. It was ridiculous. People rage quitted all over. I remember playing this in high school. It was absolutely ridiculous when somebody got this combo put together. Well, Chris, that's one of your choices, but it's not one of my choices. I'm going to kick off the next one with the Chainsaw Cannon from oh, Duke Nukem, yeah. mm -hmm. the granddaddy of boomer shooters. Now, I don't remember the plot of Duke Nukem, and in retrospect, I'm not sure it had one outside of shooting space aliens. But if there's one thing I do remember, it's a chainsaw cannon. A triple barrel machine gun that treats aliens like they're made out of lukewarm cream cheese. Oh, yeah. To this day, I don't know of any real-life triple barrel machine gun, and that just makes me sad. But i got to give an honorable mention to the Bone Duster, the quadruple barrel shotgun from the underappreciated video game Bulletstorm. It was perfect for hunting four quail at a time or hunting one very big and aggressive quail. Back to Duke Nukem, I remember playing that as a kid, and uh, just the amount of swagger in that video game was off the chart. 
good times. No, definitely. It really was. And, uh, you know, if you like good times and, you know, some very interesting plot lines, there's none other than Dead Space that came out in 2008. Now, this was a really new take on the survival horror genre of video game, whereas before we've been playing like Resident Evil, it's all like zombies and stuff like that. And you think, okay, you take a zombie, you shoot it in the head, you're good to go, right? Well, in Dead Space, they took that the complete other direction, and they introduced something referred to as the line gun, which was supposedly just like a mining tool. But with Dead Space, you basically had to dismember your enemies to take them out. You could decapitate them, and nothing would happen. They'd keep coming at you. Now, the line gun was ridiculous because, I mean, you just point this at a group of enemies. You have this huge line of laser beam coming out. Definitely one of the video games of my youth that I remember the most as far as being out there in sci-fi. And I know you've got an interesting one here next. Yeah, this isn't really a shooter. Saint Rose 4 was, uh, was kind of if, if Grand Theft Auto was made by people on synthetic marijuana. Uh, and they came up with dubstep gun. Now, if you've ever heard of dubstep, it kind of sounds like techno if it was recorded with farmyard equipment. And you already know it's, like, it's capable of causing intense discomfort on its own. But the dubstep gun weaponized the dubstep even further by using sonic energy to blow things up with a beam of solid confidence energy. It is a very interesting, unique type of firearm that you don't typically see in video games. Well, I've got an interesting one here for the next one that uh, is definitely a cult classic. People absolutely love this game. Now, in 2007... Portal released, and they had the portal gun, which is basically, you know, you shoot it twice, you get a red portal and a blue portal, and you have, it's a puzzle game. That's the really interesting part of it, and you have to basically maneuver around the map, achieve certain objectives, get certain pieces of equipment here or there or everywhere, and there's quite a deep, in-depth storyline about AI uh, and things like that. Now, this is a game I haven't played too extensively myself, but I know people have spent countless hours playing this one and moving their portals around to help them get where they need to go. This next gun isn't even a gun. Chris, I want to ask you a serious question. Okay. Have you ever wanted to shoot bees at your attackers? Obviously. Then you need plasmids, the impossible genetic mutation used in Rapture and Columbia and the Bioshock series. Yep. Injecting the right plasmic equips the user to shoot pure electricity, fire, or icicles at their attacker. But for my money, there's no weapon more reliable than a swarm of ornery bees. Maybe one day Daniel Defense will develop an AR that can shoot bees at people. And Ammo.com will be able to send bees to your doorstep. But until that day comes, I'll just carry honey. So now another one uh, that I definitely would not want to be on the wrong end of is the Lancer from Gears of War. Now, of course, on the, the surface, this is merely just your standard fully automatic assault rifle, except when you get a little bit too close for comfort and you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, it has a freaking chainsaw underneath the gun where you can basically chop your enemies in half. Now, Gears of War, the original was released in 2006, where you're in control of the protagonist Marcus Phoenix and he's fighting against a group of aliens called the Locust. They're pretty nasty and disgusting looking and you definitely take a lot of satisfaction when you get Close enough for that CQB engagement, and you can just, you know, chop somebody in half. Uh, this next one, kind of also a, a bladed weapon, the Gunblade from Final Fantasy VIII. Now, I haven't actually played any of the Final Fantasy games because I'm not that enormous of a nerd, but I did have to play Final Fantasy VIII because the cool anime guy protagonist has a big honking gun blade. It's basically a sword with a revolver for a handle, and it's a perfect weapon for when you want to shoot some bad guys, but do sword-related things to other bad guys. I have to admit on this one, Dave, I am a big enough nerd to have played the final, some of the Final Fantasy series. Not all of them I stopped right about at Final Fantasy X. I always had to get the Prima Strategy Guides because there are so many hidden gems in that game. You would... I don't know how the developers thought of some of this stuff and, you know, how they came up with it. But, yeah, the Gunblade in Final Fantasy VIII, that was a fun one, to say the least. I, I was lying. I also played, like, all of the other ones, too. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Now we're going to move to one of my favorite first-person shooters of all time. This one definitely put the entire series on the map, and that is, of course, going to be... 
Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. In part of the game, you play as your commander whose name is Captain Price. And you go back as uh, Captain McTavish. You go back to your time when you were kind of a rookie. And so you go into Pripyat, otherwise known as Chernobyl, to perform an assassination mission. Now, this was actually the gun I'm talking about here is the Barrett M82. Now, that is an actual gun. It's real. It's a real 50 caliber sniper rifle. Our military uses this. They used it in the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. Still in use today if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, that 50 BMG hits like a freight train to say the least. Well, I got an even bigger gun, Chris. Okay. It's the classic, the BFG 9000 oh, from yeah. Boom. The big expletive gun designed to boil demons from the outside in and hallowed Doom franchise. According to my expert sources, which I just found on some forum, a single shot from the BFG 9000 is more powerful than 300 shots from a single nine millimeter pistol. It can destroy any demon in its big, beautiful ball of green energy slams into. By my estimation, a BFG 9000 will make a great deer rifle if you hate eating venison and you want to reach your tri-state area's collective bag limit with a single squeeze of the trigger. No, Dave, I remember playing Doom when I was a kid, too. When you got that BFG 9000, man, you felt like you could take on anything. Definitely one of the most iconic video game guns of all time. I got an honorable mention here, the Junk Jet from Fallout 4. Oh, yeah. Another piece of impossible hardware from the Fallout series, the Junk Jet turns any object that fits into his hopper into a lethal projectile. On the plus side, you'll never run out of ammo. On the downside, the Junk Jet would have catastrophic implications for Ammo.com's business model. May such a terrifying weapon never come into existence. Dave, you're absolutely right, and uh, I have to say, I'm a huge fan of the Fallout series, and there is nothing more satisfying than killing somebody with the teddy bear, which is something you can do with the junk jet. But uh, one of my personal favorites from Fallout, we're going to stay with Fallout, because, you know, honestly, Fallout was really all about the guns, in my opinion. Yeah, there's story and stuff like that, and there is nothing more better, more satisfying, more awesome than taking out a horde of super mutants with none other than the Fat Man. Now, the Fat Man was a shoulder-mounted nuclear launcher. Throughout the game, you could go and find mini nukes uh, around, dotted around the map. They were hard to find, and so when you found one, you really wanted to save it for something big, something special. The Fat Man actually borrows the design uh, from the Projector Infantry Anti-Tank Mark I British man-made portable anti-tank weapon developed during the Second World War. So the shoulder-mounted weapon was essentially what we would refer to now as almost a recoilless rifle. Uh, it basically meant there was not going to be a lot of backblast from the people behind it uh, and not a lot of recoil put onto the shooter. However, the people on the wrong end of that received a 2.5-pound shaped charge that went uh, you know, right into whatever it was looking to go through, punched through armor like a hot knife through butter. Now, let me tell you, a mini-nuke, is definitely an upgrade uh, to a two and a half pound shape charge. And uh, yeah, that will lay waste to any raiders, super mutants, or any other ghouls that might get in your path. Yeah, Fallout kind of made us reassess whether nuclear weapons are good for close quarters combat. And I'm excited for a future where we continue to explore that as an option. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely different, you know, the concept of, you know, a, a shoulder-mounted tactical nuclear weapon. Of course, uh, you know, there's that whole radiation thing. But, I mean, if you're wearing power armor, you don't need to worry about radiation anyway, right? Yeah, I usually just wore a nice suit in those games. Oh, I mean, that's the cool part is you not only can you customize your character, you can customize your weapons, putting on different mods to make them do different things. And I think that really kind of gives people, you know, a sense of almost being like a little bit of an amateur gunsmith. So Dave, that's our top 14 video game guns of all time, at least on our list. Uh, what are your closing thoughts on these? Well, I, I think we uh, definitely picked the 14 greatest of all time. And if anyone disagrees with us, they're what do you think they're wrong? And they probably shouldn't comment, like, and subscribe, right? No, I think they should absolutely do that sort of thing. And tell us which ones we missed. Click down there in the comments. Let us know what your favorite video game guns are that we missed. Make sure you click that like and subscribe button. And also, if you got a second, click that link down in the description. Get your free $20 off coupon from here at ammo.com. And we'll see you out on the range. <laughs>